From January 29th to February 8th, myself and Glenn Young flew to Mexico to try to attempt to climb La Malinche, Itzta, and Pico de Orizaba. This was going to be nine days where we tried to fit in three volcanoes, starting from 14.5 roughly and going up to 18,800 feet on Orizaba. The plan was to meet up with a friend of Glenn's in Oaxaca, and then drive up to the mountains further north. It's about a two, three hour drive. But sadly, he actually was in a motorcycle accident and uh, broke his arm the day before and a few other problems too. So it went from a trio down to just me and Glenn. This meant that not only did we have to fly into Oaxaca, but we also had to rent a car and then drive up north for two or three hours to actually get to the mountains. This added quite a bit of logistics and was a bit of a headache, but uh, we managed to make it to Oaxaca just fine, and we got a hotel for that night and then rented a car the next day. Gotta love those brakes, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Hay uno problema con los recesos. We quickly learned the rules of the road in Mexico. It was obviously a little bit different than the U.S., but essentially the slower vehicles will drive halfway on the shoulder, just like that, and then it will allow faster vehicles to pass in the middle of the road. And so in Mexico, pretty much any two-lane road is actually a three-way road. Unfortunately, after being delayed for various reasons, we had to cut La Malinche out of our schedule. Here you can see as we're driving past it on our way to Itzta to do an acclimatization day on that and then try for the summit so that way we could still fit in Orizaba to our trip. While on our way to Itzta, we could see Popo erupting in the distance. Popo is not too far from Itzta and if you have too much uh, dust and sulfur clouds coming out of Popo, you aren't allowed to climb or even be on Itzta. This was a little worrisome, but we thought that we would try anyway, and it turned out that it was no problem at all. The road going up to Itzta was a little blocky, and we worried about the rental car a little bit on the way up there, but still managed to get up just fine and caused no damage to the car at all. At the campsite, we discovered we were not the only ones there. That's our tent that we set up, and then we pan around to see Glenn and our rental car right there before heading up to the higher camp on the mountain further up. Can you hear it? Boom. Ah, there's a box here. Yeah, I was wondering what that was. About 14,400 feet. <laughs> After an acclimatization hike the day before, we packed up our bags and then walked up to the high camp on Itzta. This was put us at about 15,200 feet or so and uh, in good standing for the summit push. We decided to stay an extra day at this camp for, to get better acclimatization for not only this mountain but also Orizaba to come. <laughs> Well, here we are, 500 feet from the top, we can't go any further because of bad wind conditions. Unfortunately, there was at least 40 mile per hour winds, 45 mile per hour winds even, with 50 mile per hour gusts, uh, forcing us to take shelter underneath the rock right there. And uh, we were forced off of it's uh, actually closer to 300 feet from the top. So after it was quite the blow, kind of sucked pretty hard, especially after walking all the way up there. Uh, sadly, we didn't have any more time to take a second try on the peak, and we had to immediately head over to Orizaba to try out that mountain. Yeah, Glenn. Cleaning up the car? <laughs> yeah. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> savor this moment. Moments yeah. like these. 
All right, here we are in Tolucha. I think I, I mispronounced that horribly. Uh, we're at the Controllers Hostel. You can find it by typing in um, Summit Orizaba on Google Maps, and then it'll say Joaquin Controla Hostel, and then it'll direct you right to this place. Organizing gear for Orizaba push, and uh, just sort of cleaning up after it's still it's stuff. For technical gear for Orizaba, definitely gonna have a climbing harness. Uh, and then a little conf uh, sort of sorting out the gear here. Gonna have three lockers, four non lockers all together, uh, double link sling, a third hand, and then some rescue cord. And I'm bringing my ATC um, because uh, we'll have these at camp, but we aren't sure if we're actually going to bring up the micro traction or the tid block, depending on uh, what we can sort of discover from other people up there and uh, based on our judgment from what it looks like so we may leave these at camp and um, if I do and we still have need for whatever this sort of thing is then I have plenty of other options that I can use to simulate these two devices but I will be bringing the locker probably and then my ice axe I just rigged up this little leash to hook it into my belay loop uh, and I have a red carabiner on that which is the only red beaner, so that way I won't mistake it for something else. And um, that's just because losing your ice axe up there would be a pretty big problem, like life and death. So we definitely want to have some sort of backup for that. Other than that, the usual helmet, crampons, trekking pole, alpine tool, and then boots, and then ready to climb Orizaba. Okay, so another thing that we learned from mountaineering in Mexico is how to get gas for our stoves. Uh, in Mexico, you can't really find propane butane ganisters, so we get this Limix gas, and um, it actually, it's the kind of gas that you can see it, the stove is actually a recommended use for it. Uh, we found this in Home Depot in Puebla. Uh, you just sort of gotta, you just gotta look for it. It was kind of in general purpose items. It wasn't really in a special place we asked for it. Uh, one thing to watch out for is the stove when you screw on because we actually uh, didn't screw on the stove all the way and then caused some leakage and then caused maybe a little fire. But uh, no big deal, no explosions. So make sure you screw on your, uh, your stove really well to the screws right here. And then other than that, it works really well. We're just gonna bring two or one each and um, we'll be fine. A day after packing, we headed up in a four x four vehicle that we could rent from the controller's place. Uh, this road, I gotta say, was not like any road in America. You can always read and hear the stories about how terrible this uh, mountain road is. And uh, I'm inclined to believe that. It was very interesting to get past some parts, but our trusty driver knew exactly what to do and knew what the road entailed. And so he got us up there no problem. While we were driving past, we saw plenty of houses and other sort of farming uh, setups and uh, every now and again we actually had to stop and wait for a few uh, farmers to come through with their herds of animals. Uh, the lambs are so cute. <laughs> felt like it was going on forever. It's about an hour and a half or maybe even two hours to get up from the Conchola's place to the hut, but once we crested a corner we saw the large hut that could house up to 60 people and we were, could only wonder how many more folks we would be spending the night with, only to find there was only one other group there. Sadly, the next morning we were met with the same conditions that we did on Insta. 50 mile per hour winds and a fog that you when you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. So we did not make it to the summit of this tr of this mountain either, much to our surprise and sadness. Sadly, just to add salt to the wound, the mountain came out the next morning and was brilliant day, perfect blue skies. Would have been an amazing summit, but it just wasn't in the card for us this time. And we only had one try on both the mountains and both times the conditions just kept throwing us back. Overall this was easily the least successful trip I've ever had uh, for mountaineering and alpine climbing but it still gave me a great experience and I got to see a part of Mexico I've never been to before and experience the culture and the hospitality outside of America. 
I think I will return to climb these mountains again one day, um, just to tag the final bit of the summit on Itzta, and to get that final 2,000 feet or so on Orizaba. Thanks for watching, and then I'll see you guys in the next video.